Welcome back to another Fallout video everyone and in this video I'm going to be giving you guys some more settlement tips as well as showing you guys a really easy passive way to make a lot of money. I'll start with some of the tips first. Number one, make sure you get local leader one if you want to access your other settlements materials. For example, obviously you start out with sanctuary. There's a lot of materials you can get. There's a lot of wood, a lot of steel. Say you don't want to build there. You want to build, let's just say at the castle, which is where my base is. There's not as much wood and steel there. So if you have a supply line between sanctuary and the castle, now you can access all the wood and steel and whatever other items are in sanctuary. How you do that, like I said, you need the local leader one perk. Once you have that, while you're in the building menu in Sanctuary, or even the castle, does not matter which one you're in, go up to one of your settlers and hit Q on the PC. I don't know what it is on consoles. It, it should just be in the bottom. It should say like supply line and tell them to go wherever they need to go. So for me, if I was in Sanctuary telling somebody to go to the castle, I would obviously direct them to the castle. Once you do that to see if it actually worked, you can go to your pit boy and hit the C button if you're on PC. Again, I don't know what it is on console. It should say it down on the bottom on your pit boy and you should see your supply line now all the way from Sanctuary to Castle. Now, in my gameplay, you're going to see I have a lot of supply lines and you can connect all of your settlements so you can get the maximum amount of supplies. It's really cool because as long as one is linked to another, even though it's not directly linked, you can still access the material. So let's just say I have the sanctuary, I have castle, and I have a farm. I can connect the farm to sanctuary and then sanctuary to the castle. And now from the castle, I can access the materials that are at the farm. That's about as simple as I can sort of explain that. And that's why I think if you are going to be building settlements, which honestly I'm having a lot of fun with, you're going to want that local leader one perk, which I think is either six or five charisma. Speaking of charisma, another thing that I just want to tell you guys about settlements, and I don't know if this is confirmed because so many people are having different things happen. According to the survival guide, your maximum population in your settlement is 10 plus your charisma. So obviously if you had 10 charisma, you can get 20 people. Now, the thing is, if you wear different clothing that bumps up your charisma, or if you take drugs or drink alcohol that bumps up your charisma, you can get your charisma to like 20. And I don't think anybody really knows if you do that, get your charisma to 20 just for the time being, if more settlers can come in. Some people were reporting they had like 28 settlers. Other people said they did that. They had like the same, like 25, 26. But then once those effects wore off, the settlers disappeared. So it's kind of odd right now. For PC guys, at least the one benefit is mods. So... You know, I'm sure in the near future, we'll have a mod for unlimited settlers. And speaking of PC and mods, if you are on PC, I would highly suggest, and I'll leave a link in the description to get the unlimited settlement objects mod. If you didn't know, you're actually limited by the amount of objects you can place. And that's what the bar up at the top right where it says size. With this mod, you can get unlimited size and it's really helpful, especially for bigger bases. And then finally, the third thing I wanted to share with you guys about settlements is rating. You may be wondering, at least maybe some of you guys may be wondering, why raiders haven't attacked you yet. Apparently the way raiding works, it, it takes into account your food and water supplies versus your defense. If your defense is higher than your food and water, you're not going to get many raiders because obviously, just logically, they're not going to attack you because you have a good defense. But if your food and water is higher than your defense, then you may see more. So if you were wondering if you just want to test out the waters of getting raided, then I would suggest you know either pumping up your water or food or bumping down your defense now getting into the money method and this is actually gonna be touching on that whole water situation i made a video the other day telling you guys some tips about making money and then for console guys at least showing you a way to make unlimited money if you did want to go that route with a glitch this tip though is gonna make you a ton of money and it's all legit and the best part about it is that you literally don't have to do anything you just wait and sell when the items are there so for this to work, I would recommend finding a settlement that is around water, that is near water. I'm going to be showing it at the castle. The sanctuary has the river, although you are sort of limited to space there. There's the island if you ever want to go out there, but you're just going to need water. And the more water that's accessible, the better. I guess the only downside to this is that you are going to need a decent amount of materials. But honestly, the more you play the game, the more you'll find these materials. So it shouldn't be that hard. All we're going to do, and this is really simple, is make a ton of of the large water purifiers. I mean, as you can see, I'm putting a ton down here. Now, obviously, you know, this will be a progressive thing. Over time, you can just keep adding more and more. 
So maybe you'll start out with just four or five if you even have the materials to do that. But just with the amount I have, which is a ton, you're going to see here in a second, I get 400 purified waters pretty much every day or so. And if you combine that with charisma clothing, charisma drugs, you know, alcohol stuff to bump up your charisma, you can sell them for a decent amount. I think the max is about 20-ish or so bottle caps, which is pretty good considering you have 400 of these to work with if you do at least as many as I did. Plus, if you sell those purified waters to the traders in your settlement, you will actually get a bit of money back just because that's how settlements work. If not, though, you can go to other traders and sell them, but that is pretty much it. Hopefully, this helps you guys out a little bit. I, I am still learning more about settlements. Obviously, if you guys have any other questions, just let me know in the comment section. I'll try to answer them or make another video if uh, I need to. But I hope you guys have some fun building your settlements. I'm thinking actually about doing a top five settlements of the week. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. But anyway, see you guys in the next video. Drop a like on this video if you did enjoy and found it helpful. Subscribe for more awesome Fallout 4 content. And as always, it's your boy Saints fan. I'm out. Peace.